Hello and welcome to episode 51 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Alex and in this series I play 15 minute plus 10 second rapid games on chess.com with the main goal of talking through my thought process while I play so you guys can try and learn from the kind of plans that I'm coming up with, my calculations, my candidate moves, etc., and implement the, some of those ideas into your own games. And then in the post-game analysis, using the computer to delve a bit deeper into some of the ideas and actually play through some of the variations rather than just drawing a bunch of arrows or saying a bunch of notations. And with that being said, let's get into the game. All right, we have the white pieces against Norhana. Shbandi? Nohanik Shbandi? If I've got that correct, then um, I am actually a genius. And we have e4, e5. I think that flag is Egypt. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. e4, e5. Boys, boys. It's Vienna. It's a Vienna. And this video will be getting added to two different playlists, which I would recommend checking out if you're interested after this video ends. One of them being the Rapid Rating Climb playlist with all my episodes of the Rapid Rating Climb and another being all the videos on my channel which feature the Vienna game or Vienna Gambit so that you can try and get a better idea of that opening. My opponent goes to knight c6 and we actually had this I think in last episode actually which was a few days ago at the time of this video's release. And my opponent played an interesting line with knight to f6, bishop c5, and d6. And I didn't respond the best. It's an interesting game nonetheless. Um, my opponent goes bishop to e7, which is a bit more passive. And it's kind of what I like to see. I'm going to go d3. This is the typical Vienna setup. The main idea is just to control d5. And because this e-pawn is already pushed, there is no pawn on e6 to support a d5 push. And with this knight on c6, it's difficult for my opponent to build up a d5 push. And, okay, my opponent goes knight to a5. So, I believe I've misplayed this position in the past. And I went for knight to f3. Not this exact position, but a similar position. You can't really save the bishop. If you put the bishop on d5, then c6, then you're going to be forced back anyway. If you go to b3, you're going to get taken. You could claim that you open the a-file up, but you also spend the tempo dropping the bishop back. You could go bishop to b5, but then you're just going to get chased away and forced back to b3. The e-pawn is undefended, so something like knight f3 might seem good. But I'm pretty sure that's incorrect, and my queen is supposed to go to f3. I am considering the move queen to h5 real quick because the e-pawn is undefended. But when the knight takes, I will have to take back regardless because this pawn remains defended at all times. So I believe queen f3, knight g to e2 is the correct setup. And when he takes, I take back with the c-pawn and build massive control over the d5 square with this pawn, this pawn, this knight, and my queen from f3. And maybe this knight can work like this, or maybe go to h5, something along those lines. So queen f3, I believe, is the correct idea. And this is one of the reasons that um, making these videos is actually really helpful for me. Because I had a lot of people in the comment section of that video saying that queen f3, knight g to e2 is the correct setup. And now I'm putting it into action, right? It's really helpful, so thank you very much to all of you guys who watch the channel and get involved in the comments. It's really, really useful. By the way, we were threatening checkmate, so Black Rude did really have to take. I mean, he could play a move like Knight F6 to block our Queen's attack, but his Knight's already committed out there, so he might as well take. Okay, Knight F6. Um, I think this Bishop goes on E3 most of the time, and we Queenside Castle. This knight's probably going to come to e2 regardless, and then come into g3 like this. So, I think it just makes sense to develop the knight. I don't see an issue. If d6 is played, bishop to g4 is maybe annoying. Although we could play queen g3, and eye up, 
well, d6 will be played, so e5 will be defended. But we could eye up the g7 pawn. And if he takes the knight, then we can always take back. We could always play h3 to control that square as well. Um, bishop e3 looks good. I don't really want to play bishop g5. Because I don't want to trade my dark squared bishop off. Considering I've got a lot of pawns on light squares. So we're going to go bishop e3. And if he goes d6, we're going to go h3. Because I also don't want a knight coming here to harass my bishop. And a bishop coming here might be annoying. And I'm preparing g4, g5 potentially. Uh, my knight might end up on d5 at some point. If my opponent goes c6 to stop that, then d6 might become a little bit weak. I think queenside castle makes a lot of sense now. And c5 might be on the cards in some positions to try and play on this pin. We have had a very similar looking position in a previous episode, um, which if I remember, I will link in a card. But we're definitely playing this better with this current setup. Instead of a knight being here, the knight being here supporting this knight and our queen being on f3 is definitely more favorable. Okay, bishop targets c4. c4 is undefended. Do we push c5? Do we push c5 or do we go b3? Well, if b3 is d5 a threat, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 defenders of d5. He is 1, 2, 3, 4 attackers. Or either way around, we have more pieces. We are exposing this diagonal. But we do have a bishop that can drop back to c1 when the king moves. And the king could always run to the d-file if absolutely necessary and go like this. So I think that should be okay. We should calculate c5 though. If c5, can he go d5? 1, 2, 3, 4 versus 1, 2, 3, 4. He can. So if here, here, takes, takes... That's just good for black. So no, we should keep both of our pawns looking here. If b3 and he goes b5, I think we can take... And when he takes back, maybe we can throw a knight on the d5 square. And then put this knight on c3. Potentially. I don't know if we've gone wrong here, but it looks alright. I think b3 makes a lot of sense. a5... Is that a concern? Do we meet that with a4? If b5 is played, take, take, take. We should be good. We should be able to stop his pawns and then put our other knight on c3. Like I said, our king can always run back to the center if we absolutely need to. I really like this queen on f3 though. Just adding an extra layer of support for the d5 square. And protecting the e4 pawn, because there's a good chance this knight ends up moving. Okay, queen a5. I think king b1 makes more sense than king b2. Because we reserve the ability to put a bishop on c1. If we go to b1. And if we go to b2, there might be ideas of d5. And the bishop linking up with the queen on a3. Although, that's not really a big deal. I don't think. King b2 or king b1. I mean, we don't have to do either. But if we go for a move like bishop d2 and trying to move the knight, then a2 will hang at the end of those. What I do like is all of our pawns on light squares locking this bishop out. Because if d5 doesn't happen or b5 doesn't happen, the light squares are going to be a stronghold for us. If we play king b1, can he go b5 though? Again, takes, takes. I think we can just play knight to d5. Shut the bishop out, attack this, put some pressure on the knight. And then we can always replace the knight or bring a bishop back if need be. It kind of looks a bit like a Sicilian to me if b5 gets played and we have this trade. With like... My D-pawn getting traded off for a C-pawn. 
King v1 or King v2? Is there a difference? I'm going to go King b1. It just feels a bit more proper to me. I don't know how to explain it. Please let me know whether you would have gone for b1 or b2 in that scenario. Or if you would have gone for a completely different move. But they look like the most natural to me. Just keeping an eye on a2 and also making sure I can't get checked from a3. I know I've relinquished some control of a3 by not going king b2. But I don't think it's that big a deal if the queen gets to a3. Because my bishop can always drop back to c1. This bishop's going to be very important for the position. Because like I said, I've got great light squared control. But that means there's some holes on the dark squares that my bishop needs to be able to fill. And the inactivity of his dark squared bishop is very useful right now. Because the only way for him to really get his bishop into the game is to make d5 happen. And my entire setup is kind of built around preventing the move d5. So it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. If he goes for a move like rook f to d8, then he will have five supporters for the move d5. And we have five attackers but then maybe we can go for moves like g4 g5 to try and displace this knight i think that should be my idea to go g4 g5 because where's this knight going like d7 <clears throat> i don't know i don't know whether that's great for him i think i can just throw pawns forward very very rich position though <clears throat> I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. If you are, please drop a like and get involved in the conversation in the comments. Please subscribe if you haven't already, if you're enjoying the content and would like to see more of it. Because if you subscribe, then it will show up in your feed more often, you know. A6. So he really wants to make B5 happen. Okay, okay. Can we go Bishop D2? Can we also play knight a4? Because knight a4 threatens bishop to b6, trapping the queen. Wait. Here, let's say this. Here, here. Oh, the queen isn't trapped. The queen actually gets away. Wow. If the king was on b2, that wouldn't happen, but... Okay, let's not worry about that now. What about bishop d2? If b5, then we just take. If the queen retreats to b6, then he can no longer play b5. Here, if the queen goes back to like c7. Uh, I don't know how much I love that. Because my bishop's blocking my rook. E5 isn't the end of the world, though, because the queen is also blocking this A-pawn advancement. What if I go G4? Okay, I know I've referenced this several times, but this is how chess works. In one of the previous episodes, we had a similar sort of position, and the computer really liked the idea of G4, G5 when I was getting attacked, and just kind of going, you know what, you're not breaking through, I'm attacking you. So I think that is what I'm going to do. Let's go. If he makes b5 happen, if we take and pawn takes, we're quite vulnerable on the a2 square. Does c5 work? We're giving up a pawn. I wanted to play knight to a4, but if b5, we could consider bishop d2 then. Because if he takes, we can play a move like knight to d5. Queen d8 defending the bishop. Okay, he goes for it. What if we push g5? g5, knight d7.
the knight controls c5, so if we go c5 and takes, and then here and then here, the bishop is defending. I don't see how we dislodge the bishop. If we take an a takes, we're getting destroyed. I feel like. If bishop d2, take here, here. Doesn't look right. Doesn't look right. Maybe knight a4 previously was a better idea. Hmm. If we take and take, our knight is defending a2. So there is that. How easily can he dislodge my knight? I don't know. Ah, this is rough. And if he takes... I'm not loving that. C5, take. Here. This is actually a threat now, because if the queen goes to d8, then knight f6 would win the queen. But c5, take. Bishop d2. Queen b6. I don't see what we're doing there. Don't see what we're doing. I also don't think I want to force the knight back to d7, to be honest. I don't know why I didn't calculate this more. I feel like I've been lazy. Mm. Bishop d2 feels like it's a good idea. Take here. Here. How do I do anything there? I'm going to play it because I'm not really sure what else to do, to be quite honest. I'm not really sure what my other ideas are. Not in love with my position at all, but we have to keep on fighting, of course. And opposite side castling means that anything can happen, which is good for us. But yeah, I'm sure that I played the opening well. I'm sure that this was the correct setup to go for. Maybe I should have just castled kingside rather than going queenside. But, hmm, I don't know. Those of you in the comments who might know more about these types of positions can let me know. I normally play the positions with the my light squared bishop on the board uh, almost like exclusively so these knight a5 lines do kind of catch me off guard he retreats okay well that's kind of interesting I didn't expect him to do that did not expect him to do that so now we could take we could and when he takes back, the queen is not on the A file. We still have problem, like a lot of problems though. But maybe we can just play knight c1. Maybe we can just go knight c1. And go a2 is defended. What are you going to do? <clears throat> we still maintain good defense over d5. Well, this rook isn't involved while this bishop's blocking, but... Do we throw this in? Well, we are encouraging the knight to come this way. Or this way. But I don't really see where it's going. We're also maybe encouraging to move the f-pawn. I don't know if I want him to do that. Let's play knight c1. I'm just trying to defend for my life a little bit. 
we are weak on the dark squares, but hmm, maybe I should have done this first, but I'm not sure. Do we go knight a4 or not, or do we go knight e2? Here, b4 is under attack. If you go c5 to defend it, then d5 is even harder to make happen. Could play d5 though. And we can't do this because he's going to take one of these ways. Here, 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 here. We're losing material because this comes with check after promotion. I'm going to play knight a4. Just to try and lock things down on the queen side maybe. And if he tries to play like c5, bishop d7, then I can maybe just drop back to b2. Goes d5 though, I think that's accurate. If I take them, bishop takes and I get skewered. He's also defending b4 with the bishop. Ah, uh, I don't know how I defend this pawn. This is a disaster. Hmm. Yeah, e4 is too weak, and I can't take, because of this, I think. Here, take, take. I'm trying to see if I have anything, but I, I think my pieces are too much out of the game. Okay, I'm going to play rook h to e1. Because now I can actually take. Because there won't be a skewer anymore. I need to study these positions more, to be honest. Because um, I don't know why I get into such trouble with them. It's very frustrating. Because I know they should be decent objectively. Okay, knight e4... Mm. Can I move my bishop? Bishop e3. Can he give this check? Take, take. I don't know where my bishop's going, and my dart squares are going to be way too weak. He might be trying to do this, but okay. Do I just throw pawns forward? <laughs> I honestly think that might be the best plan. If here bishop takes, we could take b4, maybe. But then knight f2, oh no, then our rook would be able to move. So, maybe something like rook d2. I'm going to do it, just because I honestly don't see what else to do. If knight d2, rook d2, bishop h4, maybe we can generate something down the h-file. It would be two knights against two bishops though, and um, I am not confident in the two knights in that particular position. Hate to say it, but the board's too open, and my opponent already has an advantage. I assume he's going to take. And be up two pawns. Um, if take, maybe we can go knight d3. To fork b4 and d5. Although I don't know if I really want the b4 pawn. And if this bishop gets onto this diagonal, that might be an issue. Okay. 
Okay. Someone like this can he just take? Probably. Also stops knight d3, which is kind of annoying. I might have to play queen h3 just to watch these two pawns. Queen h3, queen f4. Rook here. I don't really want to do that. Maybe I can go rook back to d1 and go knight e2 with tempo. Or something like this. But then if I go here, I give this up. I'm going to go queen h3. I feel like I don't actually have an attack if, even, like, if he takes one of my kingside pawns. I don't really trust that my rooks can deliver enough to make it worth the, the loss of another pawn. <sighs> Terrible position, really is. It's got myself into a mess, and I'd really like to see where I went wrong, because uh, I honestly don't know. Maybe castling queenside is just bad. Like, maybe I should just go kingside and slow play the position. I, I have a feeling that's what I should have done. Just gone kingside, played the position slowly, built pressure up on the d-file. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Maybe castling queenside is too overambitious, especially without my light squared bishop. Hmm. Okay, well, we're waiting for my opponent's move. I have very low time. Does he just want to build up a battery? Maybe. And I can't do this because uh, of this. A free bishop here, I can't defend a1. Here, 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 you can just go c5. No, I, I can take it. I don't know if I'm completely losing, but I also have no time to consider these moves. I don't think I do... <sighs> really? I did consider that as in move, but... He seems to be taking somewhat unnecessary risk, but... Okay. My idea is c5, f4. And he can't take on Passant his queen hangs. If he takes like this, I can at least survive for another move. Maybe I can go queen to h2. Offering a queen trade. But then the knight hangs at the end of it. So if here... My knight is hanging, my rook is hanging. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Can I go here? Here? Take the... No. Uh, I... I don't see how I can survive this. Maybe like this? He also has this. Here. Or he could just go back, I suppose. Okay, well... We can maybe turtle up. Huh. <laughs> 
This is so horrible. These bishops are amazing. I want to try and get rid of one of them. I'm not blundering something. Wait. I'm attacking this bishop now. This is a big problem. Don't know if I can survive, but here, here. So I'm going to have to run to the corner, even though I'm lining up. Uh, this is not good. I feel like I'm fighting well. I'm doing what I can, but it's just not enough. If here he can take this, and this is mate. If here he's also mating me. Check here. I don't know what I can do. He's got to take with the queen. Surely. Here maybe? Wait, Queen H2? I'm trying to attack the Rook. Because if he takes my Rook, I'll take his Rook. And he's mated. This is so horrible. I'm Because <laughs> if I move my Rook, then I'm mated. After c2, he opens the diagonal, so I can't let this pawn move. I'm down an exchange and a couple pawns, but... <sighs> this is wild. How am I fighting back? Uh... If he goes like this as well, I'm defending this. Attack his rook. Can I have like a perpetual on his rook? If he moves to like b6, then I'm going to back rank mate him. Maybe I can throw this in? But then queen g1. And if I move the rook, c2 is mate. So the rook can't be moved. Let's attack the rook again. Is he going to go here? Take there, there. <laughs> I feel like I'm losing, but... Like, obviously I'm losing. I've got no time to think either, which is very annoying. And moves like queen e5 trying to trade queens don't work, because the rook hangs at the end of the sequence. So I can't just trade the queens if my rook is still under attack, but I can't move my rook because this is mate. Looking at back rank. Can he not just give his king an escape square? Yeah, here. Here, here, he just promotes. Let's attack the rook, maybe? Ugh. It doesn't even help. It really doesn't. Even if his rook wasn't there, this would still be mate. Because the pawn would cover b1. I'm just going for this. To be honest, though, that's game over. Take here and here. The queen needed to be on f3 to guard this. Okay, he doesn't go for it. It doesn't really matter though. Uh, I'll attack the queen, but it's game over. He's got a million moves to win. Here, here. 
probably this, probably this. Uh, I mean, we'll give him, him an opportunity to make a mistake, but it's got steamrolled by pawns. So frustrating because it did not need to happen. Yeah, that's checkmate. I can't prevent it. If I take the pawn, I'm getting mated regardless. Very, very frustrating game. I'd like to see what the game review has to say. Um, because I felt... I feel like I was doing a lot of the right things. Um, I really don't like saying this. And if, if you guys have been around the channel, you know I don't like saying this. But my opponent played at 94.3% accuracy very quickly. And he made no inaccuracies, no mistakes, no misses, no blunders. And I've done that before. I've done that before. But this was an insanely complicated game, in my opinion. Let, <sighs> I hate doing this. I literally checked his account before, um, before I actually started the game. Just to make sure that, like, he didn't look suspicious. He joined, like, a month ago. And I was like, ah, that's not great. But I thought he was okay. 94 in that, 87 in that, 90, 95. Oh, that was a bill in, so we're not going to worry about that. Hmm. I don't know. He's been getting some insanely high accuracies by the looks of it. We'll have a look through this game and see if there's any moves that were just, like, weird. And I might have a look through some of his other games. And I'll can, I'll um, come back to the recording if I find anything really strange. But <sighs> I, I don't want to throw cheating accusations out there or anything like that. But I'm sure I wouldn't be the only one thinking this is a little bit weird. We'll see. I'll have a quick look through now. All right, I've done a little bit of digging on his profile, um, had a look at a few of his games, took a bit of a look at this game as well through like with the computer. I think he's legit. I mean, his account was created fairly recently and he's been having very good success with some high accuracy games, but having a look through some of them, it doesn't look like he's playing weird moves. Um, it looks like he's playing fairly natural moves, to be fair. And I think we'll see during this analysis as well that that's probably the case. So maybe I'm just being paranoid. But I think it does highlight one of the problems that chess has at the moment, especially online, where people are paranoid of cheaters. Like, I see it in a lot of the guys in the Discord as well. People are like, oh, this guy was cheating or whatever. And sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. It's hard to tell, but... It's also pretty impossible to police. I think I think I need to make sure that when I'm playing people in the future, and I'd recommend you do this as well, you who's watching, before you start a game, check their profile. If they haven't been around for at least a year, just don't play it. Um, because whether this guy cheated or not, it's making me very paranoid with his accuracy and how new his account is. And that happened in the previous episode, uh, where I don't know if he was cheating or not, and in ones before that where they were banned for it and it was obvious. It's just, it just doesn't feel great, right? So I would say just check the profile. If it's not a year old, just abort the game. Just abort the game, especially in these slower time controls. Anyway, let's go through the game. E4, E5, Knight C3, Knight C6, Bishop C4. This was really interesting. So after D3, Knight A5, the best move is actually F4. Now, I think, right, what I had been thinking was here, here, and Knight A5 in this position. Here, I believe Queen F3 is better. 
because f4 here is not good. After takes, takes. Bishop b4, there's some problems with the knight being overloaded. So, the difference is, though, in the position we got in the game, it's very different. And I don't think I've really realized this. And f4 is actually the best move. And after knight c4, d c4, if you take the f pawn, then bishop to f4, something like d6, and the computer was recommending this setup of like queen e2, knight f3, castle queen side. And with the center being more open, I apparently it favors white. And black's a bit cramped. So I thought this was quite interesting. And the queen on e2 defends c4, um, which is interesting as well. So I didn't realize this. I went for queen f3, which is still okay. Knight takes, pawn takes, knight f6. Knight g2 is fine. Castle. Bishop e3 is apparently an inaccuracy though. I think I should have just castled kingside. And I said this towards the end of the game. Castling queenside was... It was too adventurous. I was trying to prove too much. I should have just try and played it tame. Something like d6. h3 to stop this. Maybe... I don't know. Bishop to e6. b3. And... It's just a fairly normal game, right? Uh, let's say like a5, maybe a4, just to stop black from pushing. If c6 is played, then maybe I can go bishop e3, rook d1, knight g3 looking at f5. Moves like b5 are now no longer that scary. Because, let's just say this for example. Like... I'm good. And I have no king over here that I'm worried about a4 landing. Um, because my king's nicely tucked away on the king side with all these pieces around defending it. So I misplayed that for sure. Bishop e3, d6. h3 is good. Again, I should just be castling king side, playing this position simply. Going queen side like I did was not good. Bishop e6. The computer literally is just like, look, you can give this pawn up. This is one of the best lines. Get the knight to f5. Harass the black position a bit. If the bishop goes back to e3, sorry, e6, maybe I push g4, maybe I take the bishop. Uh, this still doesn't look great, though. I mean, I'm just down a clean pawn. So, yeah, I go b3, queen a5. King b2 is actually completely losing. <laughs> Wait, so I'm glad I decided against it, but why is it completely losing? b5, c, b, c, b. My idea was this. Here, here. Why is this completely losing? Bishop d2, queen b6. I actually don't get what the big difference is. And if I go back to b1 now, I just lose a tempo. I actually don't know. That's interesting. Um, please enlighten me in the comments. Why is king b2 losing? Like, this is a worse position still. But king b2 is completely losing. And it's not even because of ideas like d5 playing something like bishop or queen to a3. But okay. a6. We go g4, which isn't a bad move. And b5 is the only move that really holds the advantage here. Let's say black goes for a move like rook e8, just for the sake of argument. Apparently it's now equal. After a move like g5, knight d7... Bishop d2, queen c7. I'm surviving. And I guess I'm building up a bit of an attack myself. I was also thinking in this position I could have tried knight a4. But yeah, b5 and um, the queen actually just sneaks into my position. If I try and do something like this, the queen ends up on a3. And I can't attack her. And my position's falling apart. If I try and save my knight, bc4, b4 trying to lock things up, 
a5, bishop takes, surely you're sacking the rook and playing something like this. Like this is just completely game over. d5 maybe, opening this bishop up. Yeah, completely losing. Um, so okay, bishop d2 wasn't a bad idea. And I thought he could just take. Because if I go knight d5, then queen d8 just saves his position. I did consider the move bishop to a5 here to deflect the queen off the defense of the bishop. That doesn't really do anything for me. Like, if the king moves and I try and be greedy and take on c6, I don't see how my knight's actually escaping the position. And he can just play a move like queen d7, although maybe that blunders this. Oh, that also blunders this. So, okay, yeah, he can just take, and then after I take the bishop, my knight's stuck. So, yeah, queen c7, good move. I take on b5, which is apparently a mistake. My thought process was, if I don't do anything, I'm going down a pawn. And I thought g5 was just helping him to reposition his knight to a better square, closer to my king. Oh, here I have knight d5. Whoa. And if CD5, CD5, the bishop's trapped. I mean, I'm still losing. I'm still losing, but this might have given me some chances to defend. That's a very cool line from the computer. I did not see that. CB5 is a mistake, though, and I thought I might be able to hold on. But I was wrong. <laughs> Clearly. Knight C1... Uh, b4, knight a4, and d5 is such a perfect move. Um, you can actually take the knight straight away with the rook. c5 was another move I considered. I thought I might be able to hold on a bit, because d5 is harder to make happen without the support of the pawn. But it's still such a terrible position. He's just coming down my king, my um, a-file, and my king can't get away. And I'm struggling to transfer pieces over because these pawns are cutting into my position. So, yeah, he goes d5. I can't take because um, I assume just bishop d5. I did consider giving the exchange up like this, but I was like, I have no counterplay. Even if I'm got, not getting mated, I'm down in exchange with no counterplay. Uh, my pieces are terrible. Maybe this was more resilient. But apparently... <clears throat> after takes, it's better to take with the C pawn. And after something like this, rook f c8 and c2 is pretty impossible to defend. So I go rook h e1, which is apparently the best move. <clears throat> Knight e4, I was hoping he might try and take with the pawn, just to have a dopamine hit by attacking my queen. Uh, and I thought, I don't know, maybe I can blockade the position a bit with queen e3 or something along those lines. But takes with a knight. I did also consider giving up my rook like this. But again, I have no counterplay. My pieces are terrible. So I go h4, just trying to create some problems. He takes, which is good. e4, that's a very nice move. I kind of just assumed he was going to take the h pawn, but maybe that he was like, that opens up too many opportunities. E4 is a nice move though. Queen H3. I'm just trying to hold on to my pawns. Because if they take them. Like I said I don't trust that I can build enough counterplay to attack him. Especially if moves like bishop f6 defend and g6. Like it's, there's nothing. Queen E5. Is a good move. Really I should be trying to trade queens here. Um, to stop this battery from forming. But if I do that, I admit that the game's over. I just admit that he's won. Because he wins a second pawn, my position is completely lost. His bishop pair are too strong, is too strong. So I keep pieces on the board. Rook a4 is a great move. Um, well, it's a brilliant move, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, it... Mm, bit of a sucker punch that because my position falls apart I try to defend with knight d4, c5 f4, I was really happy I found this 
Because if the queen retreats, I don't know, maybe I can try and survive with moves like knight e6, queen e6. I don't even know. His pawns are a real problem. It's, um, I heard it called a bathtub formation the other day. I thought that was quite a funny term. The bishop's way too powerful. And um, my dark squared weaknesses is there. Yeah, dark squared weaknesses really show. But he takes the um, here with the queen. I go knight b3. Queen back to e5. I'm just trying to blockade at this point. But yeah, his pawns are rolling. I'm finding some... Like, I'm finding the best defensive resources I can, I feel like, but there's just nothing in the position. Here I can't take with the rook, because then he will take my knight, unfortunately. And yeah, I didn't go to c1, because I thought I was getting mated, and I am. So, king a1, I'm going to be getting mated, but I tried to hold on a bit. Takes, takes, queen g3, just trying to be tricky. G5 again, trying to be tricky, but he finds the moves, and eventually he realizes that he can just give his king some breathing room, and I'm completely out of attacking opportunities. I I mean, I might as well try. Um, if, if the rook goes to a6, maybe I have some chances. But uh, the thing is, I was saying, even if I move my rook and this rook vacates the b file. C2 is still mate, because B1 is cut off by the pawn. So, yeah, it's game over. Um, I knew it was game over. Here, it's still... I'm still lost, it's just prolonged a bit. But, yeah, I instead just decide to go this way around. But, yeah, it's mate in one. Very well played by my opponent. Um, definitely giving me some things to consider in terms of my preparation. And my handling of these positions with an early knight to a5. Because I really struggle against them. I think I think I just need to be a bit more pragmatic. And be like, look, you know, I should just castle kingside. Stop being over ambitious. And just play the position slowly. I do have a nice bind on d5. So let's just play to my strength. So let's not try and go for his king. I have, I have no... Um, I have no right to castle queenside. I really don't. Like, my position is not built for this. I don't have the attacking pieces to go after his king. He does. He's got the bishop pair lined up like this, if I can draw arrows. He's got the bishop pair lined up like this. His rook's ready to start throwing the pawn down the board. My c pawn is a hook. It's allowing him to play b5 and forcing lines to open. He's also got his queen ready to activate. He's got d5 on the way when he needs it. And my pieces are around the king side. They're not helping in the defense, you know? So, tough loss. But I think it's a useful one in terms of how I start to handle some of these Vienna positions with early knight a5s. Because, realistically, I'm going to see them more and more as people start to get more familiar with the Vienna. Previously, it's been kind of a new age opening, but it's becoming more and more popular. People are starting to figure out that knight a5 isn't an antidote to the Vienna, but it's good. I might just start playing bishop b3 like I used to do, and just go into these positions. Again, play the position slow with like knight e2, castles, an eventual f4. Something like this is how I used to play these kinds of structures. And... You know, play something like this, this, and go for f4 in these scenarios. I used to do this kind of thing a lot. And, you know, the rook on the open file is kind of useful. The Having the pawn take on b3 is actually quite solid as well. I think I might revert back to these. So, um, yeah, personally, I think these positions suit me more as well. They're a bit slower, and I like those more positional kind of structures. I like tactics, but I like slow tactics. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.